it's up to us to make sure that we let these guys know that it's okay. So just because I came up to you with a halter and lead rope and you were completely unapproachable yesterday, you're doing quite fine, my man, quite fine. And I worked with him a little bit about, you know, bringing his head over and hanging out with me. And he also had a problem in hand with shouldering into me. So I had to get after him a little bit. And today, he's kind of showing a few signs of maybe disrespecting me a little bit and maybe wanting to roll over top of me. But we'll see. And he was a little goofy about this sack, so I have a feeling he might jerk it. Well, he's all right right there. But I need to make sure he stays off of me. And the wind's blowing now, of course, as soon as I pick it up. But let him sail around. He was extremely stiff, extremely stiff horse. Uh, he is right now actually two through his body to where I had a hard time doing that. There, I like that. He took a step, half a step back. There's that other step. But he had a real hard time moving his body left and right off the pressure. He wanted to lean into it, just kind of like that, uh, that roan horse. But little by little yesterday, there we go, good job. Little by little yesterday, I was able to start softening up that rib cage. And that rib cage is the big part right there. So I need to be able to have softness through the head and the neck and move those feet over, bend that body. But it's the way that I do it that makes the difference. If I just came in here and hoot and holler at the horse, there. And what I want you to pay attention to, Sierra, is when I cross those, when, when I ask him to move and get soft in his body and his rib cage, I want you to pay attention to his feet and if they cross over. There, like right there. If they can cross over their feet, stay soft in the head and neck. And again, my hand is just closing my fingers as needed. Okay, so as I move around, and you'll always see me throwing my elbows up because I don't want to be climbed on top of it. So these are all basic groundwork, like right there, you got stuck in water a little bit, stuck in the mud. Thank you. And yesterday, he wouldn't do that. He wanted to go ahead and either lean into pressure or kind of flip out. So he kind of got a little bit crazy. I want to yield those hindquarters. And every time I can work on that. And little by little, I go up with the scary thing and love on a little bit. So give direction, give motivation. I'd love it if he could just walk off and stay soft. But here's the thing that's going to happen with him. When I ask him to get soft and soft through the rib cage, he's going to speed up. So I'll choke up my lead. There we go. Much better. Push that body over. There we go. Good job. So that would be equivalent to like side passing, yielding hind quarters when you're on him. Can you move that body over? He got stuck there. There we go. He got loose. He got a little frantic. I'm going to ask you to keep moving, bud. He got a little frantic. And a lot of times horses will get frantic when you get them and you send them between a fence and yourself. But that's just another, that's just another exercise that you can do. So there he got a little stuck. See how he's really resistant here? This would be equivalent to going in a trailer, going in a stall. He doesn't know, am I going to get him or the fence going to get him? He has nowhere to go. Obviously, he's doing that. So he's trying to be lighter than the next horse so he can get away. So this is really worrying him a bunch. So it's my job to let him come through here nice and easy. And then as soon as he comes around, get super soft with him. So every time a horse gets nervous about something, most of the time, I'll point him right back to the situation that they're worried about. So in this case, it's just moving between me and the fence. I need him to move fluidly, but quietly. So if you've noticed, I started gaining some access to the hindquarters 
and I've gotten him a little bit softer and I've gotten him to the point where he can walk through this, in his mind, dangerous situation. See how worried he is about going between me and the fence? That's instincts kicking in. That's instincts. That's him. Exactly. He's saying that's way too close for comfort for me. And his left side is worse than his right, and I'll guarantee you. So I'm on his left side right now. He's much more nervous on his left side than he is on his right side. See that? Okay. The reason for that is most everybody does everything on the left side. So all those bad habits have been instilled on his left side. You attach the halter, you put the saddle on, you get on from that side. I'm not saying that anybody needs to do that because I'm a strong believer and do things both on, on both sides as much as possible. But you can see the difference right there where this way, if you've got an eye for it, he's very apprehensive. That time was a lot better. But this time, it's almost like no big deal. He's much more comfortable on his right side than he is on his left. And that is the exact reason why. Everybody has always done something on his left side because history has told us that's what we have to do. All the equipment that we use, that's what people have told us. So when we go and get on the right side, it's a clean slate. So it's important for them to understand that on both sides, it's okay. All right, give me a break from talking for a second.